So I was preparing this message, and I know last time I told you I like to cry, and I was like preparing the message, I was like, there's no way I'm going to cry. And God just really broke my heart over there. And um, I was just thinking about how much I care about all of you, and I might not know you, we may have never met, um, and I may have maybe not acted like I cared about you at some point, and I want to apologize for that if I've ever felt like I didn't care about you. And then God said um, that he wanted me to tell you that he is so thankful for each one of you. And regardless of if you feel like you're like on the right path and doing the right thing and whatever, he is thankful for you. So thankful for you. Each and every single one of you. He's so, so, so thankful. And if you walk away from nothing else tonight, I, I pray that that really touches your heart. That he is thankful for you. Not only does he love you, but he's thankful for you and for the things that you're doing on this earth and the lives that you're touching. He's so thankful. And I hope you believe that in your heart. And I hope you know that in your heart that he is thankful for you. So, now that that's done, my message is called Freaking Out in the Love Zone. <laughs> so, that had nothing to do with what I want to talk about. Freaking Out in the Love Zone, okay? And um, I was listening to a message, and that's where I came up with it, is the person that was talking just spoke that in her message, and I was like, I love that. So, that's where we're going we're gonna to title it today. Um, I want to start out by telling you a story about my sister, actually. I got to visit her this last weekend, and she was sharing with me um, just about life. And um, she is a yoga instructor at a nonprofit in Kansas City. And she actually gets to teach yoga to three- and four-year-olds. <coughs> if you can imagine that, I don't... <laughs> I still want to go and witness it someday, because I think they're making animal noises and all of these things. Um, so she gets opportunity to do that, and it's a, it's a really cool place. And um, this past week, she had the opportunity to speak at, in front of some teachers. And um, she was sharing her story about yoga and the things that she does in her, in her room and um, just how that helps those three- and four-year-olds when they go back to the classroom, how much that yoga impacts them. And the, she had a teacher come up to her afterwards and says, I think I have one of your kids in my class. She's a kindergarten teacher. And... Um, Tasha asked what the name was. I'm going to use a name, not his name. His, we're going to call him Travion. And Travion is in this class. And Travion's been really struggling in school. And um, so much so that he, he, he's been throwing chairs. He's been having really bad tantrums. And my sister's like, man, like, I've never seen that side of him before. And so one day he was, he was having one of his tantrums. And like had th just thrown a chair and he sits down and he goes <sighs> and the teacher's like oh no <laughs> like what what's he gonna do now and he, the teacher's like Travion what what are you doing he goes those are my bunny breasts from yoga duh <laughs> and the teacher was like okay and the teacher actually took the opportunity to have this little boy teach his class what bunny breasts are Okay, so I want you guys to do a bunny breath with me. The reason it is called a bunny breath is because three and four-year-olds struggle to breathe through their nose. Okay, and so when you watch a bunny, their nose moves a lot. And so you move your nose and you breathe in short breaths three times. So everybody do it with me. And then breathe out of their mouth. So one more time. And so the teacher um, used this opportunity for Travion to stand up in front of his classmates and share with his class what this bunny breath thing was that allowed him to be able to calm his body and come back to a place where he felt safe. And the teacher was awesome enough to allow this to completely transform her classroom. Travion is a completely different kid. And so I, I tell you that because I want to talk about renewing our minds. And I think um, you can think back maybe to your childhood um, and even now that we have those freakouts. 
We not, may not be throwing chairs. Um, we might not be outwardly doing anything that anybody would recognize that we're freaking out. We might, it might be an internal thing. And it's something we probably learned when we were three or four. It was something that maybe in an instance you didn't feel loved. You didn't feel safe. You didn't feel seen. And all of a sudden we've, we've resorted back to this place of insecurity, of doubt, and of inadequacy. Because it's something we probably learned a long time ago. And we've learned to cope. And the way we've learned to cope probably wasn't healthy. It was probably something where you completely shut down and didn't say a word. That's usually where I go. If I don't feel seen, I just it's not worth my time to say anything else. I just shut down. So I want to pray with you really quick. So if you guys would bow your heads with me. Papa, I just pray that um, you would help us to maybe recognize a freak out, God, that we might not even know that we have. Um, a place of, of comfort that we resort to that isn't, isn't a good place to be, God. Um, a place where we uh, feel unsafe and we feel unseen and we feel unloved, God, in those moments where we don't feel heard. God, what are those things that we do? Or what is that thing that just causes us to snap? God, I pray that right now that you would just reveal um, a place in our heart, God, a place that we, we need to have a renewed mind, God, that we need to search your word um, and trust your word, God, and abide in your word. God, and I just pray that you would speak to our hearts, God, that you would just give us something to be thinking about throughout this message, God, that applies only to me. We love you in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So I want to go to Romans 12, and we're just going to really focus on two verses tonight. So verses 1 and 2, and I'm sure probably a lot of you have heard this, and I really did not want to use these verses today. I wanted to do something completely different, and I just kept landing back here. So that's where we're going to go. So Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So I want to go to verse 1 and um, really just focus in on sacrifice. So in there it says that God has called us to be a living sacrifice. What does that mean? What does that look like? To present our bodies. So everything that we say, everything that we do, all of it, all of our life is supposed to represent God. We're supposed to be God on this earth. We're supposed to show people God by everything that we do. And I think all of us, if we're honest, can say, I do not do that on a daily basis. I probably mess up every single day and show people Hate. But that's what he's calling us to right there. He's calling us to sacrifice our bodies and not be selfish and to just show his love. But instead, we have come back to that three-year-old place and we start downing ourselves. We start feeling insecure. Our mind has... um, I was, I was reading a lot of scientific things and a lot of just brain chemical things this week. So our mind has, we have created these pathways in our brains that automatically resort us back to those things. Um, I read a couple of different times that a stat said that 95% of our thoughts, our actions, um, the things that we do and think are out of um, our subconscious. Okay, so we don't, we don't even think about it. It just comes out. We just do it. We don't even think about it. And so when we resort back to that three-year-old person where we've created all these pathways in our brain that are not healthy, moments of, of fear and doubt and being unseen and unloved, we resort back to those bad things, right? And I hope that God has really put something on your heart right now that you're like, wow, yes, that, that's what I do. When I feel this way, that is what I do. I resort back to those, that bad habit because we have limited knowledge. We've, 
we, we try and we fill ourselves up, but we've only lived our, our life, right? We haven't lived the person next to you, haven't lived their life. So we have this, this path in our mind, and it's our limited knowledge, and then we don't sacrifice ourselves. We continue to resort back, and we're selfish. We're not only f- finite. I had to look up how to say that today because I was like, you say infinite, but you say finite. So I was going to say finite. <laughs> no, finite. Okay, so we're finite. So we're, we have a limited amount of knowledge. God is infinite. But we're finite. And not only are we finite, we're fallen. We have a sinful nature. So when we were placed on this earth, our, our hearts and our minds, automatically we turn to sin. We don't turn to God. That is not a natural thing for us to do. It's natural for us to turn away from him and to, to respond in a negative way, to go back to our selfishness, to go back to our comfort zone that may not be healthy. Because that's just how we are. Adam and Eve really messed that up for us. We were born that way. But God wants us to be him focused. He wants us to walk and talk and do things to sacrifice ourselves to glorify him and to make him known. But we have hard hearts. Come back to the selfishness thing. Some of us have grown up in church. Some of us know the Bible really, really well. We know what we should be doing. But guess what? We choose not to. In my world, I call it uncoachable. So God's trying to coach us up, and we're saying, nope, I don't want to. I want to do it my way. But he calls us to be a living sacrifice. Okay? Verse 2. Renewing our minds. I think ultimately, it's trusting and resting. Resting and relying on the Holy Spirit. And that's something that's really hard. And um, like, okay, yep, that's a Bible answer. That's a, a band-aid. Um, but within the Holy Spirit, I think the Holy Spirit works on us from the outside in. And it only also works on us from the inside out. Okay, so from the outside in, I feel like um, he's, he's trying to get us to read the Bible. Worshiping right now, that's working on us from the outside in, right? Praying, spending time with him, he desires that for us. And when we do that, our minds are being renewed. Our hearts are being renewed. We're having different thoughts because I spent time with him. Because I spent time reading his word. Because I spent time worshiping. Because because I spent time doing something that I truly love and I know that he made and created me to do. He's working on you from the outside in. And another word, words for that is um, Christ's exalted truth. So the outside in is Christ's exalted truth. So he's trying to get that truth inside of our hearts, inside of our minds. When he works up on us from the inside out, he's, he's trying to break our hearts. So from the inside out is truth embracing humility. That doesn't sound very fun. But I think he's using those things in your life that are hard to break your heart. To help you realize that you can't do it by yourself. To help you realize that it's not about you. To help you realize that maybe that person next to you is going through the exact same thing. And with a combination of both of those things... He allows our minds to be renewed. So if I, heard, if I heard the truth all the time and like nothing bad happened to me ever, I mean, great. But that's not, that's, not, <laughs> that's not what God promises in his word. He doesn't say, okay, accept me and everything is easy and breezy. Things are probably going to get tough. But I think in that toughness, it shapes us to be who he's created us to be and allows our minds to be renewed. 
we pursue Christ's exalted truth, okay, so working from the outside in, when we pursue Christ's exalted truth, and we pray for truth embracing humility, so working from the inside out, our minds will be renewed. No. Okay, slap a band-aid on it, Taya, great, walk out the door, cool. No. Yes, that is what the Bible says, and I think that is truth. Yes. But I also think that's a big old band-aid on a big old wound that when I walk out of here, I'm not changed. Does anybody agree with me? It's a big old band-aid. Okay, so let's go deeper. Okay, so he wants you to know his word, right? He wants you to know it. Number one. Two, he wants you to abide in his word. He wants you to apply it. He doesn't want you to just read it and know it and believe it. He wants you to go do it. Okay? We know that, right? Most of us know that. So like I said, I was reading those scientific things, but it was out, out of scripture, and it was a lady that loves the Lord. And she was talking about how um, to really renew our minds, to really renew our minds on one thing, it takes 63 days. That is a long time. I think a lot of us have probably heard the 21-day rule to make it a habit. She claims it's 63. Um, so I was like, okay, that's cool. But then I got to thinking about it. So I like to do a, a, a verse of the year and a word of the year. And so I was thinking about back about the things that I've used in the past. And one of the, the big things for me was um, the word of the year was grace. So I focused on this word grace, and I think I actually used it for two years because it took me that long. So it took however many days, a lot of 600 and some days for me to really grasp a hold of this concept. But <clears throat> I really str struggled with perfection and um, performance. And so I really had to, to take a lot of time to understand this whole grace thing. But when I was thinking about it, I was like, okay, so I focus on one word for a year, but I truly believe my heart has been transformed. Like, I truly believe that I am a different person because I have now understand the concept of grace. It took me two years, but I, I get it. I don't think I was in, as intentional as what I'm going to talk about today, so that was probably part of my issue, why it took me two years. But I truly believe that this, this works. I truly believe that. And so thinking about that, if I focused on one word for a whole year, 365 days, 63 days is roughly two months, a little bit more. Okay, so there's 12 months in a year. I could be renewed in my mind in six different things, basically, in a year. That is a lot of transformation. If you could, whatever you guys are thinking about right now, and I know there's, we have a lot of things, I have a lot of things, that I could be renewed on in my mind. Six things in a year. 63 days doesn't seem so long. So um, within that 63 days, she's also telling, telling us that we should spend 16 minutes focused on that thing. Like intentional minutes together, 16 minutes in a row. And then I thought back to that yoga story. So my sister has the three and four year olds sit on their mats, silence with their hands still, their bodies still for three minutes. And it takes a long time to get to that point. How hard is that for us? How often do you just sit in a chair, no TV, no phone, no book, no nothing, and just stop? How often do we do that? I don't. I don't do that. Can you imagine doing that for 16 minutes? I think that's what he wants us to do, though. 16 minutes straight of no phone, no TV, no friend, no nothing, just you. Not thinking about all your thousand things you got to do, but thinking about that thing that you want to be renewed in. I was like, that sounds really hard, and I don't think I want to do that. That's why it took me two years. But when you think about it, like, that's so refreshing. We just don't do it. Stinking social media. 
Even sitting outside of your hallway, outside in the hallway in your class. We're always on our phone. What if you sat outside your class for five minutes and just blankly stared? <laughs> but you'd probably feel better walking into your classroom. You wouldn't feel overwhelmed. You wouldn't feel lost. You just got to just be. So within that 16 minutes, be mindful. So be intentional. If, it's, if God's really placed something on your heart, think about that thing. If it's something that you really want to be renewed in, think about that thing. Be intentional with that thing. Think about it in the past. Think about it, why am I, why am I the way I am? And within that, find that love zone. Okay, so we have those freakouts, probably internally. Something has stressed us out. Something has caused us to freak out. Stop. Maybe internally process it, unless you're a verbal processor. Find somebody that you trust and that you love and is a safe place for you and tell them. Ask them questions. Have them ask you questions. Discuss, have a conversation of why, do I, why am I the way that I am? Why am I doing this all the time? Why am I constantly resorting back to this place? But it's really important that you do that in the love zone. Because if you share that thing with, with somebody that's not safe, somebody that doesn't hear you, what are we going to do? We're going to go right back and do the same thing. Because we feel unheard, we feel unloved, we feel unsafe. So freak out in the love zone. That's why it's called that. Find a safe place. Maybe it's just you and God. Maybe you just need to verbally express how you're feeling, why you're feeling this way. Maybe it's something from when you're three years old. Something from a sibling, something from your parents. Something from uh, something that happened that was really terrible to you. Talk to God about it. And I then challenge you to talk to somebody that's safe. And then write it down. Write down that conversation. Write down, okay, I'm processing this. This is why this happens. This is why I resort back to that. Write it down. Then, when you guys take notes, just writing it down probably doesn't do you much good. You should probably go back and read it. Right? Isn't that good study habit? I know I wasn't ever very good at it. But it's a good study habit. Write it down, take the notes, listen to the teacher, and then when you go home, read it. Study it. Okay, that makes sense, right? And lastly, replace it with truth. Replace it with truth. And how I do it, I go to my Bible app or I go to Google, type in the word that I'm probably struggling with, and then all these verses magically appear. I don't know my Bible well enough to say, oh, it's in Romans, oh, it's in 1 Corinthians, oh, I know, I don't, I don't. Some of, some of you might, and that's awesome, I do not. I go to Google or my Bible app and type in what I want to know, and then it pops up. Do that. Write down the truth. So for me, with grace, this process, say what you feel. I feel like I have to perform. I feel like I have to be perfect. I feel like I have to do everything well. Say what you normally do. So then I try really hard, I get burnt out, I'm exhausted, then I'm grumpy, and nobody wants to be around me. Say your truth. For me, I had to understand that God's grace covers everything. I don't have to be perfect, and I'm not perfect. I just need to do the best that I can, and God's grace will cover it all. Say what you're going to do differently. I'm just going to do the best I can. I'm not going to exhaust myself. I'm not going to burn myself out. I'm not going to run around like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to do everything, trying to please everybody. 
because that's not healthy. That's not a safe, good place for me. And I had to figure that out. So ask yourself those questions. What are you feeling? What are you feeling in your freakout mode? What do you usually do when you're in your freakout mode? What is the truth to that freakout? And how can I change my response? You spend 16 minutes a day for 63 days on that one thing, not a bunch of different things, that one thing that maybe God placed on your heart. If he placed that one thing on your heart, spend 16 minutes, 63 days, and I have a pretty good feeling that you will be different, that you won't automatically resort to that freak out place anymore. You will have a renewed mind. You will see those things in a completely different way. I was thinking about it when I was thinking about my grace, and I was like, I think I've gone completely the opposite end of the spectrum. I don't really care. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to chill. I feel like I've, like, resorted, like, way, 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 way too far. I need to come back to the middle a little bit. But I'm renewed. I know that God loves me. No matter what. I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to perform. I don't have to do everything right. I don't have to talk to all of you right now, this very second, that was where my mind was. I have to say hi to her, and I have to smile at her, and I have to love her, and I have to hug her. No, I don't. I can't. I can't. I would love to. I would love to hug all of you. I love hugs. If you want to give me a hug later, great. It's really hard when I'm holding Malachi. i got to do the side hug, and I hate side hugs. I want, I desire that, but I know I can't. And we have to realize that. We, we cannot do the things that this, the enemy is telling us we can do. That's what it comes down to. The enemy is trying to tell us all these lies, and we're trying to do them, and we just can't. We were not born and made to do those. And Jesus, over and over in the Bible, is an example of that. He knows what he could do. Think about Gethsemane before he's about to get put on the cross. He said, God, I really don't want to do this, but if it's what you want, okay. But I don't, I don't want to. But he was, in that, he was in that place. He was in that safe zone. He was sharing his heart. He was honest. He was real. And he understood who he was. He understood what God thought of him. And I think it comes back down to that for us. When we can understand who we are to God and whose we are. That thing that you're struggling with doesn't seem so hard. It doesn't seem so impossible to overcome. So back to my story. Travion is five, and he understood this concept. He went back to that safe place after his freak out. He understood that those bunny breaths were what allowed him to settle down. Isn't that what we're all doing? We're all freaking out right here. And it just takes us being still. This is it a couple of different times in the Bible. Be still and know that he is God. And you are not. He is. <sighs> okay. I can do this. I got this. It's that simple. A five-year-old can get it. But it does take work. It took him a whole semester of three minutes of to understand that. But he, he, he got it in a completely different environment than what he was in. Like, how cool is that? I started crying when my sister told me that. I was like, that is powerful. And then he shared it in his safe zone, his love zone. And then God used it to impact his whole classroom. 
Like God desires us our, for our minds to be so renewed that we go impact and love people better. Not only internally is it like, oh, I can breathe again. It allows you to go be a living sacrifice. Because you know what? I don't care anymore. I'm just going to go do what God wants me to do. Because I read in his word. I sat still for 16 minutes this morning and thought about it. Like, it sounds so simple, but we just don't do it. I don't. I do not do it. Two years of grace is an example of that. This message was so convicting for me. I'm like, okay, let's do this. Let's be serious about this. Six different ways your mind can be renewed in a year. If that study's even right. It might take you 21 days. That's a lot more things. But he desires for you to be intentional in that. And it doesn't require you to get out your Bible when I have to, I have to read th three chapters today. Yes, he, he wants you to do that. But it's okay to sit still for 16 minutes and not read a thing. Not read a textbook. Not read Facebook. Not read Instagram. It's okay. I want to leave you with one question. And it's, it'll, it'll hurt your heart a little bit, I think. It hurt mine. Are you praying and laboring for a renewed mind? that discerns how to apply God's word. Okay, so when you're praying, when you're spending time with God, are you expecting just for to spend time with him? Are you expecting to be renewed? Okay, or are you asking God to give you a new revelation of what to do? Is that why you're spending time with God? This sermon is why I spent time with God this week. Because I was seeking out words to share. It wasn't because I wanted to renew mine. It wasn't because I wanted to spend time with him. It was because I wanted something. How often do we do that? How often are we spending time with him because like, okay, God, God, give me an answer. Reading through my Bible. Okay, let's flip to this page. What's, what's it going to say? What am I supposed to do? I'm guilty. He desires time with you. Just because. He desires that. And if we can commit to that, we will be different people. I'm a different person, and I was seeking after him for this, to stand up here and talk to you guys today, but I am different because of the t amount of time I've spent with him the last week. So it's cool, because I was selfish, and God's like, here's a little grace, I still love you, you're still loved. But I'm guilty. So that's a question to ask yourself. Are you here tonight because you want an answer from God? Are you here tonight because you love him? Because you desire a closer relationship with him? Because you desire for your heart to be softened and changed? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, God. I thank you for your grace and your love towards us every single day. God, I thank you for the way that you moved in Travion. God, I thank you for the way that you um, just spoke to his heart in that moment, God, and that he was able to share a, um, an opportunity of, of love, God. I just thank you so much um, just for the way that it impacted my heart, God, and I just pray that, um, that you used it to impact somebody else's heart today, God, and I just pray that you would just continue just to, to move in our hearts, God. I pray that... Um, that we would desire time with you. I pray that you would just soften our hearts, Lord. And I just thank you, God, for just sharing with my heart how thankful you are for each person in this room. God, and I pray that they truly know that. I pray that you 
Just touch their hearts today, God, and know that, that they are loved. That no matter what they walked into this room with, God, no matter the things they did this week, God, that you love them so much. That no matter how ashamed they feel right now, God, that you're smiling on them because they're your daughter and because they're your son. And no matter what, God, you're never going to push them away. And I thank you so much for that. I thank you, God, that you embrace us no matter how far we run away, that you embrace us with a hug. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.